fans, welcome to episode 5 of Star Wars Go Figure. Uh, it's been a busy couple of weeks. Um, I was worried sort of earlier this week that I wasn't really going to have a lot to talk about, but the last few days we've we've had plenty and uh, you know New York Comic Con kicking off Star Wars uh, Solo, a Star Wars story has has hit stores here in Australia, so we've all been able to run out and grab that this week, which is really exciting. It's been some big news, but uh, yeah, my name is Jesse Collins, and today is Saturday, the 6th of October, 2018. Uh, like I said, Solo came out this week, so it's been pretty exciting to sort of really dive into that uh, that world again. Um, I've only watched it once since I bought it. I'm planning on changing that over the weekend. There's been lots of behind-the-scenes stuff, which is which was a lot of fun to sort of look through. And uh, yeah, I'll be talking a little bit more about that later on, but uh, we'll jump into a bit of news. So kicking off, uh, Kathleen Kennedy's contract with Lucasfilm as uh, it was renewed for three more years. Uh, this this obviously qu- created quite a stir online. Uh, fans obviously split over how they feel about Kathleen Kennedy uh, running Lucasfilm. And uh, despite Bob Iger coming out last week and basically taking taking the bullets in regards to Solo not performing at the box office, um, he basically took a took the bullets and said, you know, the timing was off, I pushed for that timing to, I pushed for that movie to drop in May, whereas it probably should have been pushed to December this year, in a, in a couple of months, but uh, yeah, despite that, she's still copying a little bit, but uh, I personally, um, I think I think it's a good thing that she's going to stick around, uh, I think it's going to create stability, um, where the fandom has clearly been sort of split up since The Last Jedi, and whether you like it or don't like it, your opinion's absolutely fine. Um, it's and uh, it's understandable as well, uh, it's, but uh, yeah, I don't think it's a good idea to to have someone step down at this stage. Um, kind of need to get that ship steadied again. Uh, you don't have a good captain abandon ship when the waters get tough. But uh, yeah, I agree with. Um, I was watching the Jedi Council on Collider last night, and uh, I've got to agree with uh, Christian Harloff there about someone, a creative control, a head of creative control needs to come in. Someone like Kevin Feige at Marvel really needs to step in and, and take over that creative side. Then then Kathleen can, I think she can run the Lucasfilm business side of things. Um, production, she's, you know, arguably the best producer uh, going around. She has been for a long time. She's got a absolutely tremendous, uh, she's got a good resume, let's <laughs> just say that. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's it'll be interesting to see how it goes going forward. Um, whether she does see out that complete three-year term of her contract, and you know whether it goes forward from there, or whether or whether she does step down after nine. I uh, really feel like nine's going to be the catalyst here. I th- I don't think nine will fail. I th- I think nine will be spectacular. Last Jedi didn't fail. Um, if you look at the money that she's brought in for from the Last Jedi, it's been extremely successful. So. Just that the division of a story, um, which is where I think a creator needs to come in and really tie those tie those little plot threads that go into a saga together a little bit tighter. Um, but you know we're still in really early days of a new era of Star Wars. Um, it's been what five years since uh, Disney took over Lucasfilm, so we're, we're, it's still in its infancy and they're still testing waters. Um, Rogue One was a big test. Solo was a big test. Uh, creating, jumping in, and creating a new trilogy was a big test. There's so many things out there at the moment that you know they're really just testing the waters. They're seeing what they can do going forward, what works, what doesn't work. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next five years. Um, with you know they're obviously moving over to a TV platform, which we'll discuss shortly as well. Um, and animation is going to continue going strong, hopefully. Uh, resistance kicking off in a couple of days which is very exciting so yeah we'll absolutely see where it's going to go in the next few years but uh i think it's a positive thing that kathleen's going to stick around for for a little bit longer um like i said it needs stability needs someone to steer steer things on a on a track get it going again um set set some plans in place find the right person to possibly succeed her when she decides to step down as head of lucasfilm and then have hopefully have someone to come in like someone like a head of the story group like Kiri Hart at the head of the story group uh, at Lucasfilm could come in and take care of be head of creative control whatever 
Um, time will tell. So this week in particular, it's been a big week for news about Favreau's Star Wars TV series. Uh, I don't think we really expected to hear much. Uh, making Star Wars dropped a bunch of uh, behind-the-scenes spy photos, for lack of a better term, uh, with John Favreau's clearly seen on set. Um, lots of extras, and in a sort of deserty town, you can go and check them out. There's some interesting shots out there. It doesn't give anything away, so you don't have to worry too much about that. John Favreau dropped the title, The Mandalorian, which is which is very interesting. I know there's been sort of whispers and rumours going around about this focusing on Mandalorians, and it seems like it's going to be one Mandalorian at this stage. So Favreau put out a post on Instagram, black with the gold, the gold font. It reads... After the stories of Jango and Boba Fett, another warrior emerges in the Star Wars galaxy. The Mandalorian is set after the fall of the Empire and before the emergence of the First Order. We follow the travails of a young gunfighter, of a lone gunfighter in the outer reaches of the galaxy from the authority of the New Republic. Now that's that sounds pretty cool to me. Um, <laughs> I'm glad they're sort of moving away. They're, they're letting Boba Fett rot away in that gut of the Sarlacc. Um, I've... I'm a closet Fett fan. Um, <laughs> I always say he's the most overrated character, yet I have a shelf in my Star Wars room devoted to Boba Fett, and I've just never, I've never really accepted that Boba Fett survived the Sarlacc pit. I thought, you know, you know what, he's gone, he's done for. Uh, but we learnt in those little sub chapters in the aftermath series that, you know, someone found his armor. You know, his armor got salvaged from the dying Sarlacc after the. Uh, after Jabba's sail bars got blown up, so that's pretty cool. And uh, yesterday we got a first look at the Mandalorian. Whether it's concept art, I'm not sure, but it looks like they're taking a lot of influence from that uh, 1313 game that was cancelled a couple of years back, which is really, really cool. It looks great. He's got the big rifle slung over his back. Looks like a tough Western sort of gunslinger. That's what, that's what we want. That's the general consensus is that this is going to be very, very welcome come 2019, uh, whenever that's going to be, because we still don't have a date on the uh, Disney, Disney streaming service yet, so hopefully some news of that comes very soon. Multiple directors have been announced for the series, um, including Dave Filoni, he's going to be directing one, one episode, or the first episode, I'm not sure if it's the first episode and he's directing two, I don't know, I've heard whispers that he's, uh, he's going to be directing two episodes, but for sure I believe he's directing the first episode. Other directors include Deborah Chow of Jessica Jones, which is one of my favourite Marvel Netflix series. I think Jessica Jones is a fantastic series. Um, Rick Famuyiwa, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Bryce Dallas Howard, daughter of Ron Howard, getting her getting a chance at directing, which is... I think she's done some directing before, but uh, directing some Star Wars follows following in uh, her father's footsteps. That would be really cool. And Taika Waititi of Thor Ragnarok fame is going to be directing an episode two, and uh, yeah, I think he's the hot on favourite to jump in to jump in the shoes of James Gunn to direct Guardians of the Galaxy three. I think he's the fan favourite for sure, and uh, he seems like a really cool dude. Um, just watching the Thor Ragnarok behind the scenes, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can bring to Star Wars. Uh, but in terms of this series, though, I think. Long format story is going to be an absolute winning format here. Um, being able to see eight to ten episodes, you know, eight eight to ten hours of a story, like it's going to be a long movie, lots of character development. I think this is going to be a good thing going forward. Uh, you know, you can watch the original trilogy in what's that, six seven hours, and now we're getting that in you know a full TV series on based on a character, which is pretty pretty damn exciting. So, absolutely looking forward to that. Bring on 2019. Now, if you follow the internet closely throughout the week, ABC Online gave us a look at the creation of the Spacer Puss from Solo, A Star Wars Story. It was a pretty good insight you know, into its creation and the behind the scenes and inspiration of this big monster. Uh, it, was, it was a Ron Howard idea to bring in a giant space vacuum-eating monster. And uh, it, was, it was really cool. We sort of went through the creative process and how... It was it was actually Ron Howard himself who actually decided that you know it would be a good idea to as as it's getting sucked into the moor, it gets its skin really peeled off its bones, <laughs> um, which I think is a really cool. I really like that monster. I think it was fantastic. So that was really cool. So definitely check it out. Uh, ABC Online 
Uh, I can't think of the website. Obviously, abc.com, I suppose. But uh, <laughs> I forgot to write that in my in my notes here. Alright, let's jump into some toy news. Some new Black Series 6-inch figures were uh, started popping up on some Asian eBay sites throughout the last week, including Val, the Imperial Patrol Trooper that you see on Corellia flying, uh, riding the speeder bike in that car chase. And L337, uh, Robot Kingdom also has them available at the time I ordered them. <laughs> I actually ordered them like earlier in the week, so... They should still be available. Um, if not, I apologise for guiding you there and not having them available. They must have sold pretty quickly. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting them. They should be here in the next couple of weeks. So if you want to see some video reviews, stay tuned to my YouTube channel. Uh, the Lego Porg came out, was released on the 1st of October. Lego set 75230. Uh, that's hit stores around... It's online at least. I'm not, I haven't seen any stores yet, so... We will wait and see whether that hits stores down here. Uh, I know I'm probably going to be ordering that from uh, on Rick James Bricks in a couple of weeks. Uh, so I'm looking forward to getting that. And we also got the first look at an Amazon exclusive Lego set. Set it is set number 75251. It's got 1,060 pieces. It is Vader's castle on Mustafa, which looks so cool. I definitely want to get this set. It looks so sick. It comes with two Royal Guards. Two different Vaders. You've got Vader, you know, as you know him in his armor. And then we've got Vader in the back to tank there. And it comes with a Imperial uh, Pilot minifig, which is a repaint or redeco of the uh, hover tank driver from Rogue One. Which is pretty damn cool. It's a cool set. Definitely check it out. Lego posted it. Um, and it should be available on Amazon for pre-order now. I uh, can't think of when the release date was. Again, I didn't include it in my notes because I'm a moron. <laughs> um, but at this point in time New York Comic Con is in full swing and Hasbro opened up the bag and showed us some great stuff before we jump into the New York Comic Con reveals we'll have a look at some of the Resistance 3 and 3 quarter inch action figures that were revealed at CNET.com and I've just dropped a link in my show notes which will take you to my Facebook page and will take you directly to an album and we're going to start clicking through these and uh let just have a quick little chat about some of these figures because they look interesting. And uh, once we're through the resistance stuff, we've got some more stuff that has been so far revealed. Hasbro has yet to do their full panel at New York Comic Con. It's only in its second day. So we've got a few little tidbits already. Some new figures, um, some little small announcements about what's coming. But uh, we're yet to have the big reveals, which you know I'm banking we're going to get some good stuff. So we'll talk about that next week. We'll definitely catch up on those newer newer things once they're announced. Um, so if, you, if you've clicked on the link, you should be able to open it up. The first picture here is this gold, gold and black Stormtrooper. And his name is... Let me just get the webpage going here. Commander Pyre. He looks pretty cool. <laughs> um, I like him a lot. I, I think this looks interesting. I saw him in one of the trailers... Uh, in, I think it was the first one we said this gold stormtrooper I thought it was just just that happened to be the light in the room or it was like a flash on phasma or something but it, apparently we've got a gold stormtrooper he looks pretty cool and clicking across you go through we get a regular white stormtrooper for the first order stormtrooper animation style sort of brings these figures looks pretty damn cool um, it's a nice flow on from what we got in rebels um, I think that was sort of a little bit more dramatic. And following on from the Clone Wars, of course. Next one, we have Jarek Yeager and, and his droid bucket, which looks like a like a pretty pulled-apart droid, and he wears a little helmet on his on his little little head there. But uh, Jarek Yeager looks pretty cool. They all come with helmets. Um, I don't have the images with the helmets here. But, uh, yeah, these give you a basic look at the figures. Next next picture here we have Kazuda Ziono, the main character uh, for Star Wars Resistance. And I like that they've gone with the nice green on this. Um, they obviously want to change your ideas of, you know, we had Ezra for, for three or four years in bright orange, so they're definitely trying to sway you that this is an Ezra on a first glimpse. Um, but they're very similar looking. They've got, you know, 
dark hair, they're young, young, young teenage boys, I guess. Um, but Kaz looks cool. He's got a helmet. He's got a blaster. I like. The, I really like the green. I think that's. I think that pops nicely. Good, good color in these figures and characters. So next one, we've got Major Von Reg, which is a Thai pilot with a different looking helmet, and he's all red. He apparently flies a custom red tie interceptor i think tie fighter or tie tie fighter red crimson tie fighter um so he's interesting then we've got poe and bb8 uh, i think their presence in the show will be short-lived i think they're sort of going to be there to introduce some new characters um it's going to be a gateway almost a gateway character to bring in these new characters same with phasma um will we'll be introduced to these new characters like Commander Pyre through Phasma and then they'll sort of go off and uh, do the do their thing while we follow the uh, follow the new characters in this series next slide we have Sinara San she looks pretty cool this is the purple skinned uh, it's got the sort of jewels down the, down the center of the head she reminds me of uh, like Barra Sophie and uh, Luminara Unduli so she looks quite cool. Whether she's the same species, I'm not sure. Then we've got Tora Dozer. A nice bright blue and red. She looks cool. Yeah, those resistance figures are slated for a spring 2019 or autumn time here in Australia next year. So hopefully, hopefully we'll get them soon. I was kind of expecting them to sort of pop out as the show was being released because as far as I remember when Rebels uh, when Rebels was kicking off we'd already had that three pack with the bonus mystery figure which was the hologram of Obi-Wan Kenobi and uh, I'm pretty sure they came, some of those figures came out before the show even started so uh, yeah to wait six months after the show starts is, is interesting and now we're on to some six inch black series figures these were new ones, so we're starting off here with General Grievous. He looks really, really great. Uh, my first thought goes through my head. Like every other General Grievous, is this guy going to stand for longer than two minutes? Um, I seriously hope so. I hope Hasbro have learned something over the years and used some strong plastic in those legs. Um, otherwise, this is not going to work. <laughs> you know, we've all had General Grievous figures over the years, and they've all fallen over all the damn time. But he looks really fantastic. The cape looks sick. He's got little pockets in there for the lightsabers. Um, I hope it's got the big symbol on the back. We haven't seen a shot of the, of the back of the cape yet. Um, so I hope it's got that. So there's a couple of slides there with General Grievous. He looks cool. I like, like You can sort of see the little peg holes in his arms, where the arms are going to be able to join together, and you can just have him in his two-armed mode. Um, be able to take that cape off and... I've been battling Obi-Wan. I really like the look of Grievous. Um, it was a no-brainer that he was eventually going to make it out into the six-inch line. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty exciting. I'm looking forward to him. Hopefully he's not a... I don't believe he's going to be an exclusive or a deluxe or something. Um, he looks he looks cool. Um, I hope we get the opportunity to have peg holes in his feet so he can use a stand. Because... Um, yeah, those General Grievous figures are going all day about how they don't stand up and they all get bow-legged and yeah, hopefully Hasbro's done used some stronger plastic for the legs on this one. We will see. Next slide was a unexpected but very welcome uh, addition of an Obi-Wan Kenobi from the Tartakovsky Clone Wars in his full Stormtrooper armor and he's also got the Jedi cape and a bit of robage over the front. Um, the head sculpt looks fantastic. It looks dead on. They're obviously going with the uh, the new paint deco uh, for this one, which it looks good. It's a new sculpt, which looks really, really nice. I personally would have preferred one from the the more recent animated Clone Wars series in that sort of half-armoured sort of style where he's only got the arm armour, some shin armour, boots, a little bit on the chest, and the rest of it is his Jedi robes. I think I would have preferred that. But uh, I won't complain, because this looks like a pretty damn good figure. It looks nice. I mean, we all know that those clone troopers had the best articulation going around. And it's just super great figures. But uh, yeah, I think I would have preferred the other version. But uh, I'll take it. I'll absolutely take it. I think this guy's going to be a exclusive... Uh, 
it was I think it was a Walgreens exclusive so eBay exclusive for anyone else not in the US <laughs> so there's a couple of slides as an action pose and the next slide is we're getting into some vintage collection now these are only small photos so I apologize for that well, this one is anyway so we've got uh, Princess Leia Boosh disguise Bausch Boosh uh, that looks pretty good um, I think we've seen this figure before in the black series but they're putting it back out on a vintage card which is pretty nice next one is a bigger picture it's Klaatu gift guard uh, this is a much needed upgrade we haven't seen this particular guard since the power of the force days but I believe this is one of the ones from the original vintage line too so it's great to see this one updated he looks really really good and uh, yeah some of those skiff guards were the, were the best of the vintage collection in the first time around um, the absolute highlights so they're showing us all this barge they're, all, they're getting everyone ready for the sale barge coming into February unless, unless you're outside of the states and you don't get the barge so <laughs> I'm going to have to find one somehow because I need that thing in my life Next one, we've got Salt Moray, or Yak Face, as he's better known. Um, definitely an upgrade that's been required for a long time. And this one looks absolutely brilliant. I think I've put a loose image of him on display as well later on in the in the, in the the album here. But he looks really good on the card. Uh, those who get the barge, the Jabba Sail barge, are going to get a version of this figure on a card. But it's going to be the Power of the Force card from 1984 or 5? Uh, yeah, um, with the coin. So that's that's sick. That's going to be one to keep carded. If you get the barge, keep that one carded and uh, get this one when it comes down to regular wave. Um, yeah, we haven't had a yak face since Power of the Force. So nearly 20 years since we've had a yak face figure, which is a long time. Thank you, Hasbro, for updating that one. He looks really, really good. Uh, then we've got a Scout Trooper. Uh, sorry, a Scarif Storm Trooper. Shore Trooper. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, this is a repack from the Black Series 3 and 3 quarter inch line. But looks pretty nice on the card. It's it's an obvious repack. Get it out there. Let, let, let the people army build them. Hopefully they put two in a case. Next we have an image of... We've got three more additions to the 6 inch Black Series archive line for the second wave of archive figures. Uh, the first one is going to include... Boba Fett, Bosk, IG-88, and Luke Skywalker pilot. Now they've just revealed Anakin Skywalker is getting a repack. Um, I'll be picking up this one because he's got the real photo, photo real paint apps, and it's a big improvement. And uh, hopefully this drives the prices down of the original on the secondary market because they have gone ballistic. Um, these were selling for over 120 bucks. Um, I've seen them go for more than that, which is absolutely insane. I'm so glad I got it back when I did. But yeah, I'll definitely be getting the archive version to swap out with the one I have. Um, I'll have a dark side version, a light side version. I'll just put the heads on each um, on each Anakin so I can display both of them together. Because um, it doesn't look as though there'll be any other extra paint details. It'll just be in the face. Uh, I don't have the Yoda picture, but they're also getting an updated Yoda. Which is pretty exciting. Finally, in the next lot of archive figures, is a Scout Trooper. A single pack Scout Trooper without his bike. So that's great news for those who wanted to get a Scout Trooper and d didn't want the speeder, speeder bike. Or one extras, which is definitely a plus. Moving on to the next slide, I've got an image here from rebelscum.com. Thanks to the guys at rebelscum.com for putting these photos up. I just pinched a couple. I hope they don't mind. <laughs> got the vintage collection of Stormtrooper that's coming out. Now, this this one's got some weathering on it, and I believe they're going to release it as a clean Stormtrooper, which is which is a bonus. Um, I remember Steve Evans put out a little, little poll on his Instagram uh, a couple of cons ago uh, where he sort of asked, would you like a clean one or would you like a weathered one? And I think majority of the people said, give us a clean one. We can weather them ourselves if we want to. So I think that's what they're going to do. This one seems to have weathering on the bottom and a clean top. So hopefully when he comes out, he's all clean. Um, but this is the best Stormtrooper yet. Absolutely by a country mile. He looks fantastic. The helmet is based on those on Rogue One where you know they've really gone to town and uh, fixed up their helmet. And 
some of those 3.75 uh, 5 POA Stormtrooper figures are the best looking figures out there so now we're getting them super articulated which is yes <laughs> thank you uh, it looks so good and uh, yeah, we've got a picture here the next one is Lando from Solo uh, so young Lando Calrissian and a Death Star Gunner from Rogue One and I guess A New Hope too. They look really cool. I'm looking forward to Lando. Lando looks pretty sweet. So next slide is the yak face picture I told you about earlier. He's uh, sitting there on the barge. And that takes me to an end of... Uh, brings us to the end of that album. So yeah, that's it's pretty exciting stuff. Still a couple of things here. We're also literally... Just within the last hour has been announced um, a repacked clone trooper from the Black Series of 41st Elite is going to be an Entertainment Earth exclusive um, this is the clone trooper that sort of was come out and he was painted wrong um, he had grey grey spots on him and they weren't painted and uh, then we're getting a Han Stormtrooper outfit a Han, in, Han Solo in a Stormtrooper disguise as a Target exclusive so basically an eBay exclusive <laughs> um, and uh, yeah we yet to see like I said we're yet to see what else is going to come out of New York Comic Con so uh, we'll see what the weekend brings uh, as I spoke about earlier Solo hit home video the last couple of weeks uh, it came out just earlier this week for us here in Australia really really exciting stuff I, I went and bought the DVD the Blu-ray the 4K and the Steelbook which is a JV Hi-Fi exclusive here in Australia um, so I've bought all the versions except the 3D but I got that home I stuck the special features disc in straight away and uh, yeah there was some really cool stuff on there um, Kasdan and Kasdan was a was a great little featurette there's lots of little featurettes in there there's no sort of big overarching documentary I think the round table with Ron Howard and the cast was really cool I feel like it could have been a lot longer um, but it, it was still fun um, Team Chewy was one of my highlights. If you uh, check that out, that's that was there's some good funny bits in there, and you know I love Chewbacca to death, and uh, yeah, he was, that was a lot of fun seeing Jonas like dressed up as Chewy, and he's going and hitting a boxing ba boxing bag, and then he's doing some push-ups on the ground. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, we got got a bit of insight into the Conveyx heist, uh, which was a great scene. There's some really good special features on there, so I definitely recommend sitting down and sitting down for a couple of hours and digging through them. Um, that was a lot of fun. A couple of other reveals we've had at New York Comic Con so far is a bit of a books presentation. So we've seen the cover for Master and Apprentice, which is the Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan novel, coming out next year. Um, I feel like there's going to be... I think I spoke about this in an earlier episode where I said I'm pretty sure there's going to be a celebration release... Um, on that celebration weekend in Chicago which is pretty exciting we also saw a new book called Alphabet Squadron coming out and it was a cool looking little little cover where it's got all the different wings um, of the rebellion ships it's got the B wing, X wing, A wing in terms of comics we've seen that the, the current Vader run is going to end with issue 25 so hopefully they pick that up later that's been, that's been really promising um, and really exciting as well so we'll see what else comes out of New York Comic Con in terms of books. I'm sure we've got lots of Star Wars news to come over the weekend. So yeah, we'll talk about it next week. Speaking of next week, we'll be going... I'll be jumping on with Lockie again. He was on for episode 3. He's going to come around next Saturday, hopefully. And we're going to record a couple of episodes. We want to do a little review show of the first episodes of Resistance. Um, so we're going to endeavour to check that out during the week. And uh, have a bit of a discussion about that next week because we're both pretty excited for it. Uh, and we're also going to try and do an episode. We'll do a bit of a rundown on what's going on at New York Comic Con, among other things. And uh, so that will be next week. Expect a couple of episodes out next week, which is pretty exciting. Um, can't wait to sit down and record with him again. We had a great time last time. So that just about wraps things up for this episode thank you all very much for listening it's, it's always a pleasure to put these out I'll have a lot of fun doing it where to find me online you can check me out on Instagram at The Forces with Jesse Facebook at facebook.com forward slash The Forces with Jesse subscribe to my YouTube channel it's The Forces with Jesse you guessed it and if you find, find Star Wars go figure on iTunes and give it a 5 star rating that would be sick episode info I'll chuck out as they're released in areas i'll throw it all up on facebook and uh, instagram and you'll know when the episodes are live 
Uh, yeah, like I said, thank you very much for listening and watching, and or watching. Feedback's always welcome. Drop some comments. Let me know. Send me an email. You can email me at theforcewithjesse at gmail.com. Until my next episode, guys, may the force be with you always.